Alrighty, people. I told you this would be on at 2. We got on at 2.04. We tried doing the whole Facebook Live bit, and it was just not happening. Facebook Live sucks. Never works. It always restarts my phone if I'm on more than 15 minutes, which is why I'm bringing you this show uh, on Speaker.com. So... I am joined by my good buddy, Eric Ellis. If anybody has listened to me piss and moan about sports from the Buffalo Bills to UFC to uh, NHL to whatever, it is this man. So I brought him on. He is going to uh, preview the fights with me tonight and obviously, or for tonight, I should say, for tonight, uh, UFC 217 live at Madison Square Garden Arena. For my money, this is the Super Bowl of MMA this year, the biggest card in uh, the in the UFC or in the MMA world uh, for 2017. So we're going to break down in this part one edition of the Thomas Take Wonder Boy versus Jorge Masvidal um, and what that fight means for the UFC welterweight division and obviously um, who we think will win the fight. So Sounds Eric, good. welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me again. It's been too long. Hopefully we'll get you again. we'll get you on uh, sooner next time. That sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Wonderboy versus Masvidal. Obviously, uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, the uh, two-time UFC title contender. He's fought Woodley twice, losing once, going to a draw the first time, and, and then losing the second time. For my money, I thought he won the second fight. I was very agitated felt like Woodley only really won the fifth round and got a decision, which didn't make sense to me. Um, so do you think uh, that this fight is a UFC welterweight contender fight? I know we talked in part one uh, on Facebook where I kind of previewed some other fights, but for your money, you would say that this is the, the UFC welterweight title contender fight. As of right now, yes. I think it is the number one contender match that everyone's been looking forward to. Uh, you know, Wonder Boy, like we just discussed, well, you just said, uh, mm -hmm. his fought Tyron Woodley twice already, but he is, in my mind, the best welterweight right now uh, besides Tyron Woodley. Uh, I think that Masvidal is a good competitor, and I think this is a good match by itself, uh, but I don't see Wonderboy slowing down. He's been on a warpath besides the Tyron Woodley fights. Um, I think that he's going to continue to do well with his standing game and his takedown defenses. Uh, even on the ground, you know, Wonderboy is a good wrestler. So I don't see Masvidal point off the win tonight. I think Wonder Boy is going to win by decision, uh, and I think he's going to get the next title shot. I think that that, like in a perfect world, in a world where like <laughs> rankings actually matter, and it's <laughs> almost as if ever since the UFC decided to implement these rankings, it's they haven't really followed them. Um, and it's almost like, it's I don't know if it's just a coincidence, but it's almost as if ever since... WME IMG bought the UFC for $4.2 billion that they need to make a return on that investment. So they're literally looking through the newspapers, regardless of what the rankings say, and just toss them in the garbage, lighting them on fire, and saying, we don't really <laughs> give a rat's ass about the rankings. We would rather just put on the fights that the fans want to see, See the fights that are exciting. And that's why Tyron Woodley is coming in and saying, the, the welterweight champion, I should preface my statement by saying that for those of you that don't know, the welterweight champion is coming out and saying that I want to fight Bisping or GSP next. I want to take on these guys, these exciting fighters, Nick Diaz, all these names, where he doesn't really have the pull to do that, being that his, his title fights haven't been exciting at all. When he's headlined pay-per-views, they haven't been money makers when when he fought Lawler or Maya uh, or Wonder Boy I should say yeah um it, it's it's very frustrating if, if do you agree with the fact that Tyron Woodley like deserves to pick and choose his fights or not, not right now I don't uh yeah. Tyron Woodley as a great of a fighter as he is he has been more or less one of the lower tier champions and, and that's not saying too much because not all the champions in the UFC have really had any star power behind them either. Mm -hmm. I, I think after uh, you know Conor McGregor, you got Michael Bisping, and mm -hmm. then arguably I would have to say Cody Garbrandt next, just because of Cody Garbrandt's standard. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe Amanda Nunez because Amanda Nunez um, beat Ronda Rousey and Holly Holm, and no one really seems to have anything in regards to DJ, who's arguably one of the best of all time too. Uh, but 
it's just the short competition they have <coughs> in his division. But mm-hmm. back to Tyron Woodley, uh, I don't think he does right now. You know, his fights haven't been as exciting as people would like. Uh, I mean, when the promoter of the UFC, Dana White, says that your fights are boring, uh, you're not probably going to get a, a lot of um, backing and support from the, him. The crazy part of all of this, too, is that he probably had Robert... Whit- when Robert Whitaker, the, the, when the UFC decided that Michael Bisping can't fight the middleweight champion, his knee is messed up, he, he's not fighting. They put Romero and Robert Whitaker together for the UFC interim middleweight title. And Whitaker came out on top of that. He was going to fight Michael Bisping next. And his knee got messed up. So Whitaker's knee got messed up. So that made the Woodley GSP fight, which they were trying to make, virtually non-existent. And, and meanwhile, GSP was trying to get the Bisping fight the entire time. So that was Woodley's shot, really. Had Whitaker not gotten hurt, he probably would have fought Bisping. Bisping probably would have never fought GSP because the UFC didn't want to do it for whatever reason. And, um, you know, Woodley probably would have got that fight with GSP. That's not to say that he might not, you know, in the future, if GSP wins versus Bisping, or even if GSP loses versus Bisping, I wouldn't be shocked if he got that fight. But I just don't think Woodley is in a position to pick and choose his fights. In a perfect world... If Wonderboy runs through Jorge Masvidal, which I think he can, then he should get the next title shot, regardless of whether he lost to Woodley once or twice before. But the UFC, in my humble opinion, due to the track record lately that the UFC has had, they will not put Wonderboy in a title shot with Tyron Woodley. They will put Wonderboy up against uh, Darren Till or Mike Perry or somebody like that to try and promote those guys, even though those guys would, would I'd say definitely Mike Perry, would, would get destroyed by Wonderboy Thompson. I would agree. I would maybe agree. maybe the winner of Magny versus Carlos Condit would then fight Wonderboy. I would definitely pay to see Wonderboy fight Carlos Condit. Uh, but I, I, it's tough because on the outside looking in, this is the biggest card of the year, the biggest fights, and you have Wonderboy versus Masvidal to kind of start the real action where Johnny Hendricks and Paulo Tapilolo or whatever the hell his last name is, he would he starts the action on the pay per view. But really, the real action is is Wonderboy and Masvidal. Um, I think that this should be considered the number one contender fight in a perfect world. But like we're saying, I just don't think that they'll uh, they'll do that. Uh, yeah, I think outside of um, the rest of the pay-per-view, Bisping and GSP is a money fight. That's what it really comes yeah. down to. Madison Square Garden, uh, you got to have a big card. Mm-hmm. Last year, you obviously had Eddie Alvarez versus Conor McGregor to unify, mm-hmm. to get the lightweight championship belt. Mm-hmm. Um, it was going to be huge. You know, people were buying pay-per-view to see if Conor can make history. Yeah, and, uh, and they're doing they- the same in, in, not in the same, which we'll get to that a little bit later when we talk about Bisping and GSP, but not to the same effect. Like, this will probably be the third highest gate in MSG history. Where number one is UFC 205 and number two is a Vander Holyfield versus some bum that nobody ever remembers. But <laughs> that's just the nature of boxing. But, um, you know, uh, in terms of the welterweight division, though, would you say, back, back on track there, in terms of the welterweight division, would you say that um, the welterweight division is one that is the most exciting right now? It's the most deep, without a doubt, yeah. in my mind. Uh, you have so many options to go for Ty- Tyron Woodley for the belt. And you have so many other options you can do. Uh, Tyron Woodley is just the champ, but you have Steve Wonderboy Thompson, uh, Masvidal, Johnny Hendricks, uh, you know, Robbie Lawler's also still in there. People keep forgetting about him. Rafael Lasagna's moved up in weight. Uh, it's, just, it's a huge division. stats, And I don't know. I mean, there's so much they could do. And there's... Two fights already on here that are going to be welterweight fights. I mean, you can just name off names that would sound like good fights at this point. Mm-hmm. Because this is just the most deep division in the UFC. And so many fights can be put on that would entertain fans. Uh, UFC Fight Nights could be done with the main event for the number one contender spot for a welterweight fight. And it would be... One Wonder Boy, yeah, Wonder Boy and Masvidal could, could realistically headline a FS1 card. They could. Um, yeah, yeah in, a, in a five-round main event. Um but yeah, I'm I'm very excited for this fight with Wonderboy and Masvidal. I think that um, 
This is going to be one that uh, we'll definitely have to see a different Wonder Boy, though. I think Masvidal is going to force uh, the kind of glitz and glammy striking style of Wonder Boy to be kind of gritty. But we've seen that from Wonder Boy. He did that in both Woodley fights, yeah. I thought. Um, yeah. Let's we, we previewed the fight. We kind of gave our take on how it could impact the UFC welterweight division. Let's do a, a prediction. What would you say will be the ending result in this fight between Wonder Boy and Jorge Masvidal? I kind of already did when we uh, first started talking yeah. about it, but I do think Wonder Boy wins by decision. Okay. So that's going to be my prediction. You, would you say that Masvidal will be a stiff challenge for him, or do you think it'll no, be definitely. like a... Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not going to go easy, but it, I think he wins by decision. Majority. Uh... I don't know by unanimous, but I think majority decision would be yeah. uh, Steve Wonderboy Thompson's win. I could definitely see uh, the same result in, in Wonderboy uh, winning this fight via unanimous decision. It's just very tough because I, I'm always... I'm always somebody that thinks uh, what's next, what could be next for the winners and losers of the fights. Um, and Wonderboy would definitely be in line for a title shot. I just don't realistically know if that's what they will uh, if that's what they will do for Wonderboy. Will they give him the title shot? Will he have to fight another contender? Will he fight the winner of RDA versus Lawler? Will he? Will they make like a mini tournament at welterweight? Meanwhile. Tyron Woodley will be pissing and moaning over the fact that he hasn't gotten a big money fight yet as a UFC champion. I, I just, who knows? At this point, there, there used to be, there used to be, back, back when the UFC wasn't owned by a billion-dollar company, there used to be, uh, or, or purchased as a billion-dollar, four-billion-dollar company, there used to be, we would know what was next before it kind of happened. Now, it's as if nobody knows what's next. Nobody knows... Ooh, win the fight. Nice. Yeah, and they, they ask him all the time, they're like, what's next? What? And you obviously you have to see the fights play themselves out, but uh, to say the least, he's like, well, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Well, we'll see what happens. Um, I think Wonderboy will win this fight via unanimous decision as well as Eric. Uh, we agree on that one. Um, we're going to move on to Joanna versus Rose. We'll be right back. This is the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. I'm Ryan Thomas, joined by Eric Ellis. We'll be right back.